All right, we've grown accustomed to the situation at Ohio State under Urban Meyer. This was the youngest team in Power 5 football. I believe it may have also reached uh, the youngest status in FBS. It was certainly in that uh, top three in terms of youngest. You would think that the defections to the NFL would be few when you're that young, but uh, not so much. The NFL still... uh, uh, taking uh, players, uh, underclassmen from Ohio State, Raquan Millen. We talked about him in a previous segment. Uh, the defensive backfield, though, rated when we talk about three of the top NFL draft prospects in Malik Hooker, Garyon Conley, and Marcus Lattimore. So Ohio State has to retool, but they certainly have plenty of talent to do so. Uh, we bring in Brandon Zimmerman, as we, as we do each and every week, to talk Ohio State football. We're setting up with each and every positional unit, and we look to the defensive backs where Ohio State, uh, in recent years, and even if we go back 30, 40 years, has been just about as strong as anyone in college football in the defensive backfield. So this year, obviously, it, we've got a corner set. we got a safety set. So can you break things down for us, Brandon? Well, it's kind of crazy when you think about – all the defensive backs that the Buckeyes have lost here the uh, past um, two years, when you think of the Von Bells and Tyvis Powells and the um, Eli Apple, Gary Conley, Lattimore, um, Hooker, you know, I mean, those are a bunch of big name starters that, that they've lost in the last two years. But then when you sit back and look at their roster and realize that they still, even with all those people gone, they have 11 guys that are four star or higher battling for those spots. So the talent is still there. Uh, the, the experience, uh, the proven uh, stats aren't quite there yet, uh, just as they weren't last year with guys like Hooker and um, Lattimore. Uh, but Coach Coombs and his staff, they do a great job of you know getting these guys ready. Um, as far as this year goes, uh, you really have two um, returning starters, even though there's kind of a um, asterisk with uh, with one of those. Uh, Damon Webb's coming back as uh, one of the safeties starting back there. Uh, Webb was a four-star cornerback, uh, had played nickel kind of for the Buckeyes for his first two years on campus, battled some off-the-field type of stuff. Uh, Last year, he made that move back to safety. And uh, after some early season struggles, he kind of – he kind of got into a uh, rhythm there and uh, was actually a pretty solid safety back there for the Buckeyes. So that's a big thing, having a senior come back. Um, He's definitely going to be in charge of that uh, DB room. Uh, He's the third, uh, he's third in the returning tacklers for the Buckeyes. He had 57 tackles last year. Um, Joining him as a, probably a starting is uh, Denzel Ward um, at cornerback. Uh, He was the number three guy last year, but he really could have been considered a co-starter. The Buckeyes did a good job of rotating out Conley and Lattimore and Ward so that Ward played quite a bit. Um, Even you think back to like the uh, Fiesta Bowl, the second series of the game, uh, Denzel Ward was already being um, rotated in. So he's got a lot of um, experience. So he's expected to fully take on that starter role. So that leaves two open spots for the uh, Buckeyes, one at corner and one at safety. At cornerback, I really think there are four guys battling for that starting cornerback spot. Um, you've got Damon Arnett, who's a redshirt sophomore, who was the nickel cornerback last year. Um, he was a three-star cornerback from 2015. Last year, he had 21 tackles and a pick. Um, a lot of playing time there as the uh, nickel guy, so could he slide into that cornerback spot? Um, and then you got three brand new guys to the program who are going to be fighting for it too. You've got uh, Kendall Sheffield, who's going to be a redshirt sophomore, who's the JUCO transfer um, through Blinn College um, from Alabama. Uh, he was a five-star cornerback in 2015. He was the number 20 um, overall player coming out of high school when he signed with Alabama. Um, you've got Jeffrey Okuda. Uh, and Sean Wade, both of these guys are going to be true freshmen coming in this year. Okuda was the number one cornerback. Sean Wade was the number two cornerback coming out of coming out of high school. Uh, so those four guys, Arnett, Sheffield, Okuda, and Wade are the four that I think are going to be battling for that open cornerback spot. Um, 
ultimately, I would, if I had to put money on it, I, I would guess that Kendall Sheffield steps into that uh, cornerback spot. Um, I don't think you're going to get a Juco transfer with that much talent coming here to play nickel or uh, to uh, sit the bench. Um, I think Sheffield's got the size um, that the Buckeyes like on the um, outside, uh, which Denzel Ward doesn't have. So they're going to want someone with a little bit of size um, out there. Uh, Denzel Ward's only 5'10", which is pretty short for what the Buckeyes like out there. However, Denzel Ward's probably the fastest player on the Buckeyes team. So that's going to make up for some um, size there. So uh, I think it'll be Sheffield and Ward starting out there at uh, cornerback with Okuda and Wade getting a lot of uh, playing time and also being ready to jump in next year if, you know, two more uh, cornerbacks leave for the uh, draft. As far as safety goes, I think there are two, possibly three guys fighting for the open safety spot. Um, you could throw Jeffrey Okuda um, in there, who's kind of a projected more as a safety than a uh, cornerback. Um, but the two main guys fighting for it are Eric Smith, who's a, a senior. Uh, Smith was a big time safety uh, prospect coming into the uh, Buckeyes. Um, freshman, sophomore year, um, Eric Smith was making plays um, as a backup, a real big uh, special teams guy. You think back to the, to the uh, 2015 spring game where um, Eric Smith had two picks. Um, you know, and just he, he was really battling Von Bell and Tyvis Powell for one of those starting uh, safety spots. Ultimately, it went to Powell and, and Bell. Um, Eric Smith played great on special teams that year, played great as a, a backup. Um, however, towards the end of last or towards the end of 2015, he uh, hurt his knee and spent you know, spring of 2016 and fall of 2016, trying to get strength back up. So he was really not able to compete for one of those open safety spots last year. Um, and then Hooker and Webb kind of took that and ran with it. So now Smith is um, healthy. Uh, it's kind of expected that he's going to really battle for that open uh, safety spot next to uh, Damon Webb. Outside of Eric Smith, I think the biggest threat for that open safety spot is Jordan Fuller, who will be a true sophomore um, this year. He was a uh, one of the few true freshmen to play quite a bit last year, a lot of uh, special teams. Um, he's got size. I believe Jordan Fuller's listed at 6'1 or uh, 6'2. So he's got the size that the Buckeyes like in that uh, Malik Hooker, Tyvis Powell type of role. Um, so ultimately, I think it really comes down to Fuller and Smith with Okuda being a dark horse there. And I think Eric Smith is going to finally get his chance to run with the starting uh, spot there at safety and uh, get his chance in, in his uh, senior year to kind of propel himself into the draft next year. So I see starters next year as Ward, Sheffield, Webb, and um, Eric Smith next year. Yeah, I think the one thing that's easy to dismiss is when uh, we get used to the uh, revolving uh, turnstile at different positions at Ohio State because of the underclassmen leaving, unlike just about every uh, other program in the country outside of Alabama, LSU maybe, um, is that, uh, especially in the secondary, when you make a mistake, uh, big yardage happens, big plays happen, and despite the the tremendous talent coming in, uh, obviously, for the most part, younger players are more apt to blow coverages and make mistakes. The other thing, if you watch Ohio State's defense from year to year and then compare it to the rest of college football, the one distinction I'm going to make is that this is one of the better tackling teams year in, year out in college football. And that's something we saw with all the huge plays that Malik Hooker made. And that's what got him on the national stage where the seven picks and the three pick sixes was that he made tackles. He was a sure tackler. And, and most of the guys were, but he was one of the guys that stood out to me as, as a safety that was a sure tackler uh, in the back end and really reinforced uh, the run support as well. So that's something that's going to have to be replaced. Yeah, and that's funny because, you know, you think back to 2014 when the tackling for the Buckeyes was so bad yeah. and uh, Clemson and uh, Sammy Watkins just kind of tore them up with uh, broken tackles and stuff and um, Urban Meyer – said, look, this needs to change. He made a change on the uh, defensive side of the ball. They brought in uh, Chris Ash there um, at the uh, time. And uh, they really have these past couple years. You really don't see too many uh, broken tackles. Um, they really focus on that um, quite a bit. And uh, hopefully now with Fickle gone, 
Um, Shiano has completely taken over the uh, defensive uh, play calling. So, um, you know, with uh, Billy Davis um, coming in, hopefully it continues to to go because really tackling has been one of their strengths, especially um, open field. So. So the other thing I'm curious about, Brandon, is uh, Denzel Ward being the fastest player on the team. Is that official or is that what the guys talk about? Is is that what he has said or somebody else? That's kind of been what uh, people have uh, talked about for the uh, past years. Um, you know, like they don't go out there and hold uh, public um, contests for uh, people to watch. But um, it seems to be uh, just like, you know, uh, Billy Price is the strongest guy on the team based off of uh, of the lifting. Um, it's kind of assumed that Denzel Ward is the uh, fastest guy based off the information that's kind of been leaked out from the uh, coaching staff. All right, the defensive backfield at Ohio State, despite the losses, always loaded with talent, and this might be the best recruiting class overall and maybe the best recruiting class in the defensive backfield that Ohio State's had in uh, maybe the history of the school, and that's saying a ton, but uh, considering Sheffield uh, as a junior college transfer as well, um, it's just amazing what uh, the talent is in the back end, but um, again, inexperienced sometimes blow assignments and aren't physically up to the challenge in the run game. So the, there is still obvious work to be done as well. Brandon Zimmerman from the Buckeye Battle Cry, breaking down positions across the Ohio State uh, depth chart, offense and defense as we get you set for spring practice. Brandon, it's always a good discussion. All right. Thank you very much.